If you're looking to make money online, or even if you just want to increase the profits of your existing business, creating an e-commerce store is an excellent strategy. Scratch that. This is 100% the best way to make money online, and that goes for hobbyists, entrepreneurs, bloggers, and small businesses alike. Bold claim? Sure is, but keep watching to find out why we can be confident in making it. So just what is e-commerce? Of course, the term refers to online commerce, in other words, selling products online. But while e-commerce could mean selling an e-book from a landing page, it's most often used to refer more exclusively to online shops that sell multiple products and that have a particular layout and setup. The most popular example of an e-commerce store is undoubtedly Amazon. This acts just like a high street store and allows you to browse products at your leisure and add them to a shopping cart. The only difference is that you can do all this from the comfort of your home and once you check out, the products are simply delivered to you wherever you are. It's a familiar concept, but what makes it so important? OK, so let's look at why e-commerce is the future. Well, the first thing you need to recognize is that e-commerce is growing. In the early days, people were uncertain about spending online and found it daunting to hand over their card details and trust a supplier they couldn't meet face to face. But now look at companies like Amazon and eBay. These are household names around the world and everyone from the young and tech savvy to the elderly are now happy to shop with them. These companies have helped many people to put aside any concerns they might have had regarding e-commerce and to trust in buying online. And e-commerce is growing as well and doing massive business. For proof, you need look no further than the stats from Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday is a national holiday of sorts where online retailers are anticipated to lower their prices. It follows Black Friday, but these days it tends to do nearly as much business and it's growing rapidly. For example, in 2014, Cyber Monday created a total of $2.59 billion in sales online. Now, that's no small number. But in 2015, this was increased to $3.19 billion. Now, that's a huge increase. $2.28 billion of those were on desktops versus $2.04 billion the previous year, while $838 million were through mobile devices. Now that's versus $548 million. Across all devices, Cyber Monday increased by 21% from the previous year. Seeing as Amazon is probably the best known online retailer, how's its growth going? Well, the company sold a total of $107.01 billion worth of products in 2015. The company employs 230,800 people and there are 304 million active Amazon customer accounts. The brand is worth $47.73 billion and this is only expected to continue to grow as well. The story is the same across the board. People are becoming more and more familiar with e-commerce and high street stores are struggling. This is undoubtedly the future of selling and it's easy to see why. Reason number two is its convenience. So what is it that's led to such growth in e-commerce? Well, the simple fact of the matter is that online sales benefit everyone. The only reason online sales haven't already dwarfed physical sales is probably the fact that some people still don't trust shopping online or aren't sure how to go about it. Over time, this concern will be eroded more and more, while tools like PayPal will make it easier and safer than ever before. When you sell products online, it means you don't have to employ staff and you don't have to rent the same amount of physical space. You'll need somewhere to store your products, unless you're drop shipping, of course, but other than that, your only cost will be hosting, shipping and web design. Lower overheads mean more profit for you, but they also mean lower prices for customers. Customers now have the ability to order products online conveniently, but on top of that, they'll be getting them for a much lower price. There's also greater versatility in terms of what you can sell. With an e-commerce store, you can sell physical products, which will require some upfront investment. But there's also a lot less upfront cost. 
If you wanted to set up a high street store, then you would need to be willing to spend a large amount of money to rent the physical space, to invest in the stock, and to manage staff, etc. However, if you're setting up an online store, then all you're going to need is some inventory to sell, you know, perhaps not if you're going to be selling a digital product or acting as an affiliate, and a website. It takes just a few clicks to set up an e-commerce store, and that means you can have one up and running in minutes for negligible cost. And reason number three, it's the best way to monetize a website. Now, the last two examples explain why businesses should launch their own e-commerce stores and why you might consider launching an e-commerce store as your business. But you should also sit up and take notice if you run a blog or a website already and you're just looking for a way to monetize it. Why? Because it's actually one of the most effective methods there is of making money from a website. Until now, you likely have been relying on one of several methods to make money online. Perhaps you're making money from advertising on your website, you know, selling ads on Google AdSense, for example, or maybe you're making money selling an affiliate product. In either of those scenarios, it's important to recognize that you've placed yourself at the bottom of the food chain. In other words, you're being paid by those advertisers and product creators in order to send more business their way. The fact that they're happy to continue paying you means they're making money from you. In other words, they're earning more from your visitors than you are. You're getting a small share of the profit, but they're taking home the lion's share. And in fact, you're essentially doing their work for them. And that's why you'll typically earn about 1 to 50 cents per click on an advert meaning in turn that you're going to need hundreds of thousands of visitors a day to your site to make any reasonable money. Compare this with selling your own products and making $20 to $50 each time. Of course, it's much easier to get someone to click on an advert than it is to get them to buy something, but not as difficult as you might think if you have decent products and you're running your store well. The bottom line? Well, you can make a living from a website with just a few hundred daily visitors instead. If you have an e-commerce store, the buck stops with you. Now you're making the maximum profit from your customers because you're selling something to them and you're keeping the difference. What's more, you're keeping visitors on your site and engaged with your brand. You're not sending them away. You're keeping them right where you want them and making a real difference to the way they see you. Finally, Selling e-commerce products is better than selling digital products or affiliate products because it's something anyone can appreciate. Only a very specific type of person buys e-books about making money online. Phone cases and clothing, though, well, that's got much broader appeal. Try putting an e-commerce store on your existing website and just see what the difference it makes to your profits. And the potential for growth is massive. With all that in mind then, it's definitely worth learning how to create an e-commerce store so that you can start maximizing your online earnings, and potentially so you can turn your small website into your very own global brand selling products that get you really excited. That's where this video series comes in. Here you will learn how to run an online store and create an effective business model how to set up your own online store with one of several e-commerce platforms, how to find, create or buy products you can sell online, how to build a website and social media presence to promote your store, how to stock and design your store to maximize sales, how to price your products, how to choose products that will sell well, how to use apps, plugins and more to get even more sales, and much more. In short, you'll learn how to create an e-commerce business or add e-commerce to your existing model in simple, easy steps. From there, you'll then be shown multiple ways you can increase your profits and turn your business into a huge success. Are you ready? Let's start selling online. There's so much more to running a successful e-commerce business, but a lot of it you'll learn as you go. Hopefully, though, you're feeling inspired enough now to jump in and start giving it a go. This is a fantastic way to earn money online, and, as we've seen, there are countless small tricks and techniques you can use to accelerate your sales and increase your earnings. 
The potential is limitless and it's only going to grow as e-commerce becomes more and more widely accepted. To recap then and set you off, just follow these simple steps. Step number one, decide what kind of business you will be running. Is this something you're adding to your existing high street store? Or are you designing a store to run as a side business while you continue with your current employment? Step number two, choose a type of product, choose a type of niche and choose an audience. Think about how you'll create and procure your products, but also think about the amount of competition you'll face and the key phrases that you'll come up against. Step number three, Create your website and add an e-commerce platform. Use WordPress and either WooCommerce or Shopify for the majority of scenarios. Step number four, start adding themes and plugins and think about how you're going to lay out your site. And finally, step number five, begin marketing your site through social media and with a blog. Reinvest the profits in more stock and more marketing and keep a close eye on what's working. Rinse and repeat these steps and before you know it, you'll be able to start expanding your operations. Next step, well, buying your own warehouse. But that's a topic for another video. Now you know why e-commerce is such a big deal and what makes it such a fantastic tool for making money online. But the next question you need to answer is how you're going to make this work for you. Having an e-commerce store is great in theory, but it's what you do with it that really counts. And as it happens, there is no right way to run an e-commerce store. This video series is aimed at everyone from small business owners to hobbyists who just want to run a store as a side project. The way that both types of seller goes about creating and running their business will of course vary, so find the relevant heading here that applies to you and see how you can fit an e-commerce store into your existing business. If you already have a high street store, then the good news is that you're already in the perfect position to start taking full advantage of e-commerce. You already have inventory, you already have a niche and you probably already have a website. Adding e-commerce is simply the next logical step. By creating an online store, you can give your customers the ability to order your products online, which will increase your turnover and also give you a much bigger potential audience. What's more is that you can use your physical store to promote your e-commerce store and vice versa. It's important that you do this correctly though. You'll need an e-commerce store that will automatically synchronize with your physical store so that the inventory is updated when products are bought online or in store. Ideally, you want to find a solution that lets you use your EPOS, your electronic point of sale, to automatically update the stock with no work on your part. If you're in work and you want to try setting up your own e-commerce store, then you'll be starting from scratch. The good news here is that any income you add to your existing income will be extra, meaning that this can be a very small scale business model and you won't need to worry about trying to run the business on a massive scale or making a fortune from day one. With that in mind, you can identify a type of product you want to sell, create a website and a store and invest in a small amount of inventory. Or perhaps you even want to make your own products. You know, either way, you can simply invest more money each time you sell off what you have while keeping a little extra for yourself. You can also use an eBay store and social media to help your sales and possibly run a blog to handle content marketing. If you're a blogger or a marketer, then you might already have an audience and a platform from which to sell your products. This is simply a matter of adding a store to your existing business and promoting it to your email list, to your visitors and anyone else that you can influence. This business will start with you identifying a type of product that fits into your niche and then choosing an e-commerce platform to suit your store. You might decide also to remove AdSense or affiliate products from your site in order to focus more attention on your own store for maximum profits. So those are some basic models for your e-commerce stores. The next question is how you might apply them in the real world. Now, here are some imaginary scenarios to help you visualize what this might look like. 
Now let's look at the clothes reseller. And a very simple and easy business model if you're looking to make money from home as a side business is to become a reseller. What this means is that you're buying stock and then simply reselling it for a little more. To do that, you'll normally be buying in wholesale. So let's say you choose to sell clothes from home. Now, this might mean that you buy 100 shirts for $600, that's $6 each, and then you sell them off at $12. This is called keystone pricing, and it's a fairly standard pricing system for a lot of wholesalers and manufacturers. Even if you only sell half, you've broken even. Ideally, though, you'll aim to sell all of them, giving you $600 profit. You may choose to keep $400 of that and then reinvest $200 so that you can order $800 of stock next time for $1,600 turnover. Over time, your pot will grow. This then allows you to invest some money into marketing, you know, Google AdWords or Facebook ads, for instance, and to diversify your line with different types of shirt and other types of clothing. But right from the word go, you can start making money from your store by selling to friends and also by selling some of your stock on eBay. This is all much easier, though, if you try to focus on a specific niche and to give your store some kind of focus that sets you apart. For example, you might sell shirts aimed at a particular demographic, you know, plus-sized women, entrepreneurs, gay men. Or you might sell shirts that have something in common, you know, they're easy to iron, or they're light and cool, or they're bright colours, that sort of thing. With something that sets you apart and helps you to appeal to a particular audience, it's more likely your adverts, your social media posts, and your listings will get noticed. What about if you're a blogger with ebooks? As we'll see in more detail later in this series, you don't need to limit yourself to selling physical products. You can actually just as easily sell digital products like ebooks and even software through an e commerce store. So if you have a blog that's currently selling a single ebook from a sales page, you might consider branching out and selling multiple books from an online store. This way, you'll look like a much bigger business and people will be able to browse what you have to offer at their leisure. This also means that you can use things like special offers, deals, and a whole lot more to promote specific books, and you can place adverts for your books around your site instead of using AdSense. What's more, you can even start using things like apps and plugins to sell your books in a more inventive way. You can embed your e-commerce store right into your Facebook page, for example, for more direct monetization of your social media efforts. No matter what your business is, though, you're going to need something to sell. Here are some ways that you can stock up a shop, even if you aren't fortunate enough to own your own manufacturing plant. And the first is 3D printing. This is a surprisingly viable option these days. If you have a 3D printer or you're happy to use a website like Shapeways, which you can find here at shapeways.com, then you can sell plastic or metal objects with nothing more than a 3D model file. Now, this might mean that you sell phone cases, jewellery or ornaments or even toys. As mentioned, you can sell products by finding wholesalers and buying in bulk. There are other ways you can be a reseller too, such as adding value yourself by packaging products nicely or just finding them very cheap somewhere. If you have a skill such as painting or making clothes, there's no reason why you can't turn that into a business and sell through your own online store. You might also want to try selling through Etsy.com as well. There's no reason you can't sell digital products from your site. Now, this might be an online course, an ebook, or a piece of software. There's no overheads and there's no delivery. Affiliate products are products that you sell for a commission. Now, some digital affiliate products let you keep as much as 75% of the profits. Dropshipping is in many ways the ideal business model. This means you sell a product that you didn't create, except that you're allowed to add your branding to the product so it looks like you did. 
What's more is that you don't have to worry about shipping yourself. That's also handled by the other company. And there's POD. Now, POD stands for Print on Demand. And often this term applies to publishing, meaning that you print books only when you sell them. Both Amazon and Lulu have great POD publishing options. Likewise, though, POD might mean printing T-shirts or printing logos onto mugs. T-shirt stores are big money online and they're super easy to set up. Finally, why not just outsource the creation of your product? This is easiest for digital products, but it can work for all types of things as well. So, with all that we mentioned in the last video in mind, the next thing to do is to start building an e-commerce store. The good news is that this is fairly easy. To begin with, you're first going to want to create a general website if you don't have one already. This is not only going to be used to promote your e-commerce store, but may also provide the backbone of your store itself by providing a way for people to easily access it and to find your goods. To create a website that will act as part of an e-commerce store, you're probably going to want to make something using WordPress. WordPress is a content management system, otherwise known as CMS, that makes it easier for you to build your site, customize the look, and add, edit, and remove content as you see fit. It can be likened to a blogging platform similar to something like Blogger or LiveJournal, but it's much more powerful than that and can be used to build entirely self-hosted websites. What makes WordPress so amazing is just how easy it is to set up. This is a website that can be built as easily as creating a Facebook profile, almost. This is practically a one-click installation, but from there it's incredibly powerful and can provide you with all the features you're likely to need. And I don't mean that WordPress is as good as the tools that professionals use. This is the tool that the vast majority of professionals use. Or to be more precise, 40% of websites and blogs on the net are powered by WordPress. And that includes many of the biggest blogs on the web like Mashable, Forbes, BBC America, Sony and more. What this means for you is that you have a simple way to build a website that can be just as successful as any of those. This is a tried and proven means to build a website and removes the need to worry about whether the underlying code of your site might be holding you back. It's simply good business to choose WordPress and it doesn't really make much sense to choose anything else. And as though that wasn't enough to make WordPress by far the best choice, it's also important to consider the huge amount of support and extra features that WordPress offers. The simple fact is that so many big websites are using WordPress, it means that there's a near infinite supply of people who can help you with any technical difficulties you might be facing, and there's just as many support forums, online guides, and more as well. WordPress is also endlessly customizable and upgradable due to the themes and plugins. Themes let you change the way that your site looks and is laid out with simple installation. Meanwhile, plugins let you install additional features which can include all kinds of things like widgets for the sidebar, like comment sections, and like entire e-commerce stores. This is the point at which your ears should be picking up. Many of the options we'll be looking at throughout this series require you to be using WordPress, so don't even think about it. So with that said, how do you build your WordPress site? Well, the first thing you'll need is hosting. And this, of course, means that you're paying for space on a server that will remain connected to the internet. In turn, that means anyone with an internet connection will be able to find your website as long as they have the right address. From there, you'll then need a domain name, which is the address people will type into their browser in order to be directed to the hosting that you're paying for. Fortunately, most hosting providers also offer domain names, removing the need for you to find both separately. What's also good is that both hosting and domain name are relatively affordable and shouldn't set you back more than $10 a month, if that. There are plenty of great hosting on domain packages out there, and to begin with, you won't need to worry too much about things like your bandwidth or your space. 
Usually a fairly standard package will more than cover you until your site gains some real momentum. And once that happens, you won't need to worry about the cost of upgrading your service. While there are lots to choose from, a good choice that will suit most purposes is Bluehost. If you don't want to spend time comparing hosting packages, then head over to bluehost.com and sign up there. And as you can see, at the time that I'm making this video, they're offering a special offer and they do all sorts of things as well, hosting, domain names, etc. And it says they've got over 2 million websites being powered worldwide. Make sure you choose a domain name that will be helpful when it comes to marketing your site. You need something that somewhat describes the nature of your business, but avoid using obvious key phrases in your title. Google has said that the best practice for businesses is to focus on creating a brand. Most web hosting accounts, including Bluehost, come with something called cPanel, and this is basically a control panel that provides access to a lot of useful features that can help you get started with your website. One of the best things included with cPanel is the option to one-click install WordPress, and that does exactly what it says it does. So log into your account and then scroll down. You'll generally find this towards the bottom of cPanel. Um, sometimes you'll find WordPress listed here under software. Other times, other installations, um, some come with uh, an extra pack called Soft Delicious, which is what this one does. Others come with Fantastico. And it's a whole lot of different apps that you can install from within cPanel. So find where the, uh, the WordPress installation script is. Click on it. And it takes you through here. And then all you do is simply click on the Install Now button here. And it talks you through the whole process. It only takes about two minutes and it's very straightforward. Um, one tip to keep in mind, though, is to expand the advanced settings, as this will let you enter a store name and a username and password for your WordPress account. And cPanel isn't unique to Bluehost either. A lot of other hosting companies also provide the same features, and it will make it similarly easy for you to set up WordPress with a single click. Failing that, you might need to go through the installation manually. Uh, but this is fairly simple too. You'll need an FTP program in order to do that. Uh, probably the best one is FileZilla, which you can download from filezilla-project.org. Or failing that, you can use uh, the file manager that comes as part of cPanel. And basically what you have to do is you have to come here to wordpress.org and download the installation file. FTP it to your server and then unpack it and follow the instructions. And just as with doing the one click installation, it is fairly straightforward. You can also, if you wish, uh, get your installation hosted for you on WordPress.com. And this is a great option for building a free website if you're a hobbyist. But if you want to make money, though, it's not something you should consider as it's going to make your business appear amateurish. And it also is going to limit uh, many of the things that you can do with it. Now just point your browser at whatever your URL is, followed by forward slash WP hyphen admin forward slash and enter the username and password that you chose. You'll now get logged into your dashboard where you're able to edit content or change settings or alter your theme, install plugins, and a whole lot more. The first thing you'll want to do is to change some basic settings, which includes the site's name and its tagline. At the moment, it says just another WordPress site. And this is still pretty generic looking at this point. And this is where adding and editing your themes comes into play. So once you're logged into your dashboard, you simply come here to Appearance and Themes and click on that. And it comes with some already installed. 
and you can go through here and click add new and then browse through uh, some of the themes that are available from WordPress, either free or paid. And you can install them and completely change the look and navigation of your website. Failing that, you can alternatively look at another external site such as ThemeForest, which you'll find here at themeforest.net. And here you can find some more premium themes that, you know, it'll cost you a bit more, but they'll also be more unique, more professional and uh, more professional looking, really. As you can see, prices start from around $2 at the time that I'm making this video. To install plugins, meanwhile, you just want to go to plugins and add new. And there are again plenty you can choose from, including both paid and free options. And these can do some excellent things for you, pretty much from handling your SEO to adding comments or other interactive elements to your website. You can also find plugins that give you more customization options, you know, changing your fonts, for instance, and that speed your site up and a whole lot more. So have a play around and see what you can come up with. You'll find it's fairly easy to build a completely unique and powerful website that looks just as professional as any of the big names that we discussed earlier. Now you have your website, you just need to add the actual store component to it. Again, this is very easy thanks to tools that practically automate the process for you. The only downside is that there isn't much of an obvious choice when it comes to your e-commerce store. That is to say that no single e-commerce platform stands out in the way that WordPress does. You know, it just means you need to think a little and pick the option that suits your needs best. This video will help you to make that choice and then talk you through the process of setting up. OK, let's look at the top e-commerce platforms that you have to choose from. Remember in the last video when we said that you had the option of a hosted WordPress site? Well, you also have the option of choosing either hosted or self-hosted e-commerce platforms. And just to reiterate, a hosted e-commerce platform is one that we stored on an external website rather than your own. That means you'll create your store a little like you would a profile on a social media site. It means less work, but it also means that you'll have less flexibility. Here are some of the top hosted platforms. Shopify, which you'll find here at shopify.com, or if you're in the UK like I am at the time I'm making this video, it'll redirect you to the local site, which is shopify.co.uk. And there are other local versions of it as well. And it's all to do with the currency and the taxes and that sort of thing. Um, but Shopify is by far one of the most popular e-commerce solutions around. And it's one that nearly everyone's heard of. Like WordPress, it comes with a huge amount of support, plugins and themes, meaning that you can tailor it to your exact needs and meaning that there are plenty of ways that you can boost your sales. Some of these plugins let you do powerful things like tracking your visitors and integrating email marketing or like selling digital products and delivering them automatically. It does lack some of the customization of hosted solutions, however. For example, there's no option to create your own custom checkout page. In terms of products, Shopify can support up to 5,000 different items, which is more than enough for most purposes. The basic Shopify membership is free, but you might need to pay if you want to upgrade to some of the more advanced features. Still, it's not prohibitively expensive. Big Commerce is hosted much like Shopify and is also suitable for up to 5,000 products. It's another solid choice, but it falls a little short of Shopify thanks to a higher price point. Moreover, Big Commerce is less well known than Shopify, meaning that it doesn't have quite the same number of plugins or features. If you want to create a store that is in any way unusual, you should probably check first to make sure that Big Commerce can support whatever it is that you're planning on doing. Big Commerce has one big advantage though, and that's that it provides excellent support for international payments right out of the box. Now, this might be a big deal if you plan on saying to the US, 
and the UK, and you don't know whether to price your prices in GBP or US dollars or that sort of thing. As I say, do have quite a lot of support for that. And you can find out more here at bigcommerce.com. And finally, there's Magento. Now, Magento, which you can find out more here at magento.com, is one of the best hosted solutions around in terms of its customization and features and is an excellent choice if you want to build something very unique with lots of power under the hood. This is the option that the big businesses with lots of money and tons of stock will want to use. You know, if you have aspirations of taking on Amazon, uh, in which case you're mad, but anyway, Magento is the best non-custom built option. Magento supports up to 50,000 items and is installed independently from your WordPress site. The downside is that it's very fiddly and confusing if you're a new user. So in other words, unless you have a good development team behind you or you're a developer yourself, you should probably stick with something easier, you know, at least to begin with. And this is a point we should quickly make. When setting up your business, always think about the path of least resistance. You know, don't make extra work for yourself just because you want the pride of taking the less easy route. You know, it's not good business. Focus on keeping your overheads, both time and money, low and getting quickly to the point where you can reliably start making money. You know, don't let ego get in the way of good business sense. Hosting your e-commerce solution on your server is probably the most popular solution. The only downside, of course, is if your web server crashes, you can lose all your orders. So it's best to back up at least once every day. Now let's look at some of the best self-hosted solutions. The first one is WooCommerce. And WooCommerce, which you can find out more here at WooCommerce.com, is the self-hosted option that we would recommend. And what makes this such a great choice is that it's actually a WordPress plugin. And this means that you're not installing anything extra at all. And the whole process of setting up is incredibly simple. There are free and paid for versions. You can install the free version from within the WordPress dashboard like any other plugin. Just do a search for WooCommerce and you can install it. Or you can upgrade to the paid for version, which you can install from their website, as I said here, WooCommerce.com. Um, for most people, the free version is going to be fine uh, just to start up with. And then once you've started to build your business, you're making some sales, then it's worth investing in the paid for version. Now, of course, because this is a plugin, this does mean that your store is going to replace the website that you already had. And this means that you need to consider this right from the start or you need to set up a secondary domain for your shop and then link the two together. Note that even if it does replace your site, though, you can still have a blog on the store. You know, uh, that It doesn't take over that particular part of the site. Now, WooCommerce has tons of support and an endless number of themes and other plugins. And this will make running your store significantly easier. And it makes it another great choice from a business perspective. One limitation of WooCommerce, though, is that it can only stock 500 items max. Now, this won't be a problem for most businesses starting out. But if you have plans to expand, then it's something that you might want to consider. Volusion, which you can find out more about here at volusion.com, is a WordPress plugin, but it's also somewhat unique in a number of ways. And that's because it isn't just e-commerce, but it's also an email autoresponder and a whole lot more. Volusion lets you track your visitors and your leads and see who's looking at your products and who's reading your emails. Volusion is something that many internet marketer types might feel quite at home with, but note that it's not particularly powerful or feature-packed when compared to other e-commerce solutions, and it's only really suitable for a small number of products. We're not going to go through every single e-commerce platform setup process here. However, as Shopify and WooCommerce are probably the best hosted and self-hosted options respectively, 
it might be useful to look at at least two platforms and how you get started. We'll look at Shopify in this video and WooCommerce in the next one. Shopify offers a 14-day free trial, which makes it easy to set up and start playing around and to decide if this is the right choice for you. To get started with that, head over to Shopify's site and then you can either enter your email address in here and click on start your free trial or you can come up here to get started. So just click here on get started and it takes you through to this page where it says start your free 14 day trial of Shopify and you enter in your email address password and your store name and then you click here to create your store. So let me just pause the video while I do that. Okay that's done so all I need to do now is click here where it says create your store and it goes through all this sort of processes and there we go it says success your store is ready to go. Now you have to add an address to set up currencies and tax rates. So again, I'll just pause the video while I do that. OK, I've got all that in. Uh, this is all made up, by the way. Uh, so please don't turn up at my office looking for me because I don't really work there. OK, so then just simply click on Next. OK, then they want some information about yourself. They want to know, are you already selling? And you can choose from these options here. So I'm just playing around, so I'll put that in. And how much revenue does your business currently make in a year? Well, I'm just getting started, so we'll say $0. And then are you setting up the store for a client? If you are, then you check that box there. And then click here that says, enter my store. And it takes a moment or two to whirl through. And there we go. You get the welcome message here. And it says your trial has just started. So you've got the trial period to see if this is right for you. I'll just talk you through the interface here. It's fairly straightforward. Um, you've got, you can select a theme for your website. So you can... Uh, go through and choose from these various ones that they have here. And you can see if I scroll down, you've got quite a selection to choose from. These are free themes, or you can also buy a premium theme as well via their theme store. Uh, let's just go back here. Go back to the home here. You can then click here to add a product to your store. Just click on that one so you can uh, see what it looks like. Uh, you add a description and a longer description. You can give it a product type, vendor, etc. Then you want to add an image which you can upload from your computer. You want to make sure that it's a nice uh, compelling image, something that's going to encourage people to actually make a purchase. Of course, you'll also need to add payment details if you want to start getting paid. With all that done, your store is ready to go live. It really is that quick and easy to start selling and to start profiting in a big way, well, potentially. If you want to add extra functionality to your site, you can start adding apps as well, which work just like WordPress plugins to enhance the features of your store. There are numerous apps that you can add to a Shopify store, and you can find them by selecting apps on the left-hand side of the screen in the burger menu. For example, if you want to sell digital products, then you can do this by using digital downloads. This app allows you to sell your products digitally and thereby make money from ebooks, etc., without having to email them to your buyers. Another great one is Pre Order Manager, and this does what it says and it lets people pre order your forthcoming products. 
The great thing about this is you can use it to get people excited about your forthcoming products and to build a buzz. And it can even be a way to make sure that there's a market for your product before you invest too much time into creating it. And finally, consider recurring orders by Bold Apps. This app allows you to charge your customers on a recurring basis. This is excellent for selling your products on a regular basis. For instance, if your customers want a monthly supply of protein shake or if they want a subscription that will give them something new to read every week. Either way, recurring orders are very good for your cash flow as they can provide you with a much more stable and predictable income and they convince your customers to potentially lay down more money for what you're selling up front. If you thought creating a Shopify store was easy, creating a WooCommerce store is even easier. The free version of WooCommerce is very easy to install via the WordPress dashboard. What you want to do is log in, click on plugins and then add new. And then where it says search plugins, you type in WooCommerce. and then enter and you can see it shows it here WooCommerce by Woo Themes and then you simply click here where it says install now and then click where it says activate plugin it takes you through to this page and this is the setup page. You can actually skip the setup if you want, although it's a good idea to just simply click here on Let's Go and then follow the instructions. And it takes you through to this page, the page setup. And this is where WooCommerce will add four pages to your WordPress site in order for it to work properly. And let me scroll down a bit here. Those pages are shop, and this is the shop page where you'll display your products. Cart, this is the uh, shopping cart page. Checkout, pretty uh, self-explanatory. And my account, and this is where registered customers will be able to manage their account details and view past orders. And it says here at the bottom, once created, these pages can be managed from your admin dashboard. So let's click here on continue. Then you want to have your store locale set up. And this is going to vary, obviously, depending on where you are in the world. They want to know where your store is based, uh, the currency that you're going to use, uh, which unit should be used for product weights, and which unit should be used for product dimensions. And it'll probably take this from your IP address uh, from where your hosting is. So, of course, if your hosting is in a different country to where you are uh, actually based, you might need to change these, but it's quite simple. You can just simply change them from the drop down menu here and so on. And if you deal in a different currency, you can uh, change it here again, all sorts of different currencies that you've got here. So it's fully customizable. I'm going to leave all these at the default settings and click here on continue. Now it wants to know about shipping and tax. Now, if you're selling a physical product, then yes, you want to check this box that says, yes, I will be shipping physical goods to customers. And if you're going to be charging sales tax, you want to check this box here. Yes, I will be charging sales tax. Obviously, this depends on where you are. Uh, in countries in the EU, there are thresholds as to whether or not you have to charge VAT. Um, so if you're not reaching that threshold, then you don't need to charge VAT, so you can leave this box unchecked. If you're in the US and you have to charge a sales tax based on your location, on uh, the state that you live in, or the town or city, then obviously you would need to check this box as well. So let's just check this box, yes. And then you want to know how you're going to enter the product prices, whether they're going to be inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax. Uh, in the UK and 
most EU countries, the prices are inclusive of tax. So I'm going to check that radio button. Um, in the US, of course, most prices are exclusive of tax, so you'll need to keep this radio button checked. Then they'll want to know your country, uh, state if you're in the US or Australia, and the tax rate. And as you can see here in the UK, our VAT rate is an eye-watering 20%. So that's all set up. So I'm now going to click here on Continue. Next step is to set up payments, and it comes with a couple pre installed PayPal and Stripe. But you can also take additional payment methods, although there is an extra charge for the extra plugin. Um, you can take PayPal, check payments, back transfer, or cash on delivery. I suspect most people who uh, are watching this video will probably want to accept PayPal. So let's check that. Now you want to enter your PayPal email address in here and then click on here for continue. And once that's done, um, you can choose whether or not you want uh, WooCommerce to collect non-sensitive diagnostic data and usage information. Uh, I'm going to click no thanks. And then that's it. You can create your first product by clicking on this button here. When you go back to the WordPress dashboard, you'll find that there's now a couple of extra tabs here at the side. You've got your WooCommerce tab where you've got your orders, coupons, reports, settings, system status, and add-ons. And you've also got your products. You can add a product categories, tags, etc. If I click on add a product, you can see that the page and the procedure are very similar to the uh, Shopify sales page and add a product, etc. that we looked at in the last video. One of the great things about WooCommerce is that they do come with a lot of support. And if you go to support.woothemes.com, it takes you through to this page here. Uh, there's a knowledge base. You can search for answers if you're having a problem. It also has uh, a very extensive video tutorial series that you can access from within this page. You've got documentation. There's quite a strong um, community because it is very well used. And also you've got things like troubleshooting tips and a whole lot of other stuff as well and it's well worth a visit to this site because it can provide you with an awful lot of information. Now that you have your store, you're probably excited to start designing it and selling it. Creating websites using these kinds of tools is a lot of fun because all the technical stuff is done for you. All you need to worry about is choosing the themes that you like the look of, deciding what colors to use, etc, etc. But don't get too carried away. While it's true that you can have a lot of fun here, remember that the end objective is to sell more items. And that means you need to think carefully about the layout and design of your site. And specifically, you need to make sure that it's designed in a way that will encourage sales. This in turn comes down to a number of consideration and design choices. If you were the manager of a high street store or a supermarket, then a big part of your job would be to decide how to lay out all of the products in that store so that they would sell optimally. This means getting people to walk through specific aisles in order to find the best sellers, thereby being exposed to other products they might be interested in but hadn't considered. In other words, the way you set out a brick and mortar store can end up having a big impact on the number of sales you make, and this comes down to basic psychology. Of course, there aren't quite as many factors for you to consider if you're going to be selling products online, but there are still some ways that you can influence the decisions of your buyers. Now, here are just a few things to keep in mind. One very important consideration for your store is the security and the barriers to sale. Remember, right at the start of the series, we discussed the growth of e-commerce and why it hasn't already grown beyond brick and mortar sales. The reason? Well, people are still concerned about spending money online. 
If you want to sell to the broadest range of people possible, you need to ensure your site looks official and trustworthy. This is why it's so important to use a professional-looking design and to create a professional-looking brand with a high-quality logo. Something as simple as a low-resolution image, a typo, or copyright 2010 can make your website look less trustworthy and cause people to leave. Another way to overcome this barrier to sale is to let people leave reviews on your store. This is something many people will be nervous to do, seeing as it can potentially mean people end up leaving bad reviews. But overall, letting people leave reviews means your customers can see other people have bought from you and received your products. If you respond to negative reviews, this will also reassure your customers that you're listening and that you care about what they have to say. Another barrier to sale is the time and effort involved in making a purchase. Believe it or not, this is actually a big deal and surveys show that people are much less likely to buy from a store if they need to set up an account first. If you want to sell as much as possible then, you need to make the process of buying from you as streamlined and simple as possible. Amazon does this incredibly well with its buy with one click system, but even if you were to mimic something like this for your site, your visitors might still be required to create an account the first time they shot with you, which could mean having to input their card details, their delivery address, etc. etc. Again, try to make all this as simple as possible to make sure it isn't off-putting for your visitors. For example, one thing you can do is to use PayPal to handle your checkout process. This can help people feel more secure shopping from your site. You know, they don't have to input their details. And it makes it a lot easier for them to buy from you. POS stands for point of sale, and it's a concept that relates to the barrier to sale that we were just talking about. In a high street store, you'll often find something called point of sale display. This is a display that will promote and sell a cheap product while people are waiting in the queue. You've no doubt encountered these before, and that's because they work. The thing to understand is that when someone has made the decision to buy from you, they will already have made that important psychological step that turns them into a prospective buyer. Prior to this point, they're still umming and ahhing about whether they want to bother setting up an account or whether they want the guilt of spending money. Once they're checked out, they've already gone through the hard bit. Convincing someone to add something small to their order now is actually relatively easy and means you can increase your profits further. Of course, you don't have a queue online, so your point of sale is the checkout page. That's why you often find sites offering to add extras to your order, you know, things like gift wrapping for a small fee. On an unrelated note, you also need to think carefully about the colour scheme and palette of your e-commerce site design. What's key to understand here is that different colours can have different effects on your customers. For example, the colours red and orange actually make people feel slightly more impatient and have even been shown to elevate the heart rate. People very often find red colour schemes somewhat uncomfortable and this can be used to your advantage. For example, this is actually the reason that a lot of fast food joints are red or orange in their colour scheme. The uncomfortable colour palette means that people don't quite feel comfortable to spend a long time eating and this means that the store can accommodate a higher turnover of customers and make more profit as a result. And likewise, it turns out that if a buy now button is red, it becomes more likely to be clicked more regularly. Conversely though, if you want people to take their time to explore your site in a sort of more leisurely manner, then you need to make sure that you use cool and relaxing colours, you know, like blues. Also important is to make sure that your colour scheme allows you to use contrast. In other words, you need to avoid making your colour palette too bright and your layout too busy. If you do that, it'll be impossible to draw attention to anything. Your aim is to make sure you can control the attention of your visitors and to get them to look at the products you're interested in selling. If everything is red and moving, then people won't know where they should be looking. In the last video, we talked about the impact that design has on your ability to sell. 
But this is actually only one of the tricks that you have up your sleeve. Also available is your ability to alter the pricing and to add smart descriptions to your store. This can not only make your items more affordable and therefore increase the number of people who can and will spring the cash for them, but it can actually have a range of subtle psychological effects as well. Let's talk about some pricing strategies. And a good one is special offers and deals, or also scarcity. And a special offer is a great way to encourage more people to buy your products. And if you price this offer correctly, then the increase in turnover should also help to increase your profits. In other words, you might lose out on each individual item, but by selling more items, you can still increase overall earnings. But special offers and deals also have another effect. They introduce time pressure. People know offers last only for a finite amount of time, and thus, by introducing special offers and deals, you'll automatically make people want to buy more quickly instead of going away to think about it. This, in turn, is very valuable for you. Why? Because people are most likely to buy things when they act impulsively. People buy most of the time based on emotion, not reason. So if you can get them to act quickly, they'll be much more likely to spend the cash than if you give them time to go away and mull it over. By using an incentive to act faster, you thereby make them act more quickly and act more impulsively. And as such, they'll be much more likely to buy from you. Another way to make your audience act quicker is to make the products limited in stock. This creates scarcity, and in doing that, in turn, also makes your items more valuable and thus desirable. People want things that no one else can have. We talked about colour contrast earlier and making your products physically stand out on your digital shelf. But there's another type of contrast to consider too, and that's the contrast between your price points. Whether we like it or not, our brains tend to automatically judge the value of something by comparing and contrasting it with other things. Something expensive only seems expensive, often, insofar as it is expensive compared to other things. What this means is that you can easily make something look a lot more affordable by putting it next to something very expensive. And at the same time, doing this can also help make the expensive items seem more premium and thereby luxury and desirable. And furthermore, this means you'll have more luck selling point-of-sale options and upselling when the customer is already spending more. When someone is spending $500 on your website, they won't think much about adding $10 extra for a discounted product. But if they're only spending $5, then they'll be unlikely to want to add another $10 to the order. Think about this when choosing what to upsell and how to utilize POS. Another option is to let your customers create their own bundles. Now, bundling essentially means that your customers can choose precisely which items they want and which ones they don't need, and thereby they can save money by buying in bulk but not ending up with items that they don't want. Bundling is very effective because it ensures that you have at least one option for every type of buyer. At the same time, it makes people feel as though they're getting a better deal while actually encouraging them to spend more in your store. You know, it's a genuine win-win scenario. When pricing your products, you might decide to include a high-ticket item that will land you a large amount of profit per sale. The aim is that just a couple of sales of this item will be enough to keep you in profit, and in this regard, you might actually use your other products in order to encourage sales of those high-ticket items. For example, if you sell a lot of expensive products, consider adding something cheap so your customers can get used to shopping with you in a low-risk manner. This way, you can overcome the barrier to sale so that all you have left to do is encourage your visitors to spend the money on that product. Another thing that can make a big difference is the way you write descriptions for your products. 
Here, your objective is to make sure that people act on impulse and are moved to spend money right there and then rather than going away to think about it. To that end, good persuasive writing for sales will need to focus on the emotional aspect of the product and this means that you're going to emphasize the value proposition. A value proposition basically describes how a product will improve someone's life. In other words, don't just look at the sum of the parts but what people actually want to gain from spending the money. For example, people don't buy dumbbells because they need something heavy. People buy dumbbells because they want to be strong, toned, healthy, attractive and confident. This is what you need to emphasize in your pitch because it will ensure that your prospective customers start imagining what life could be like after they've purchased your item. Meanwhile, try to get people to imagine what your product will be like to own. You know, companies like Apple always use words like feel and touch a lot and emphasize how quickly they can get their hands on it. Finally, there's split testing. We've seen how color, layout and even wording can improve the effectiveness of your store and help you to get more sales. If you get all this right, then you'll be improving your optimization to increase conversions. But the question is how to know if everything that you're doing is working. And to ask that question, you can use something called split testing. This basically means creating two different listings for the same product, you know, one using a red font, for example, and one using a blue font. You then observe how each listing performs over time and ultimately compare the results to see which design got the most sales. Once you have your answer, you adopt the winning change and this way you can evolve your site over time until it's perfectly optimized to convert the highest percentage of visitors possible into paying customers. If you took on board everything we covered in the last video, then you should now have an online store that's highly effective at converting visitors into paying customers. You're drawing attention, making your products look desirable, and then maximizing the profits from each sale that you make. All that's left is to make sure as many people as possible are finding your website, and if you do this right, then your business will start to scale and you can invest more back into marketing. Here are some strategies you can use. Before you start spending money on adverts, SEO might be a better first port of call. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization and is essentially the process of optimizing a website and link strategy so that your store is easy to find on Google when people search for it. To do this, you often begin by identifying a search term, otherwise known as a key phrase, such as buy hats online. Only you won't want to choose buy hats online because that will be very competitive and very difficult to rank for. This is why it's such a good idea to have a particular target audience and a particular type of product. Remember how we discussed selling brightly coloured shirts? Well, brightly coloured shirts is likely a key phrase that people look for but which isn't quite as competitive. To start ranking for this term, you need to ensure that you have a well-optimised website, meaning it's fast, mobile friendly and easy to navigate and that you include the keywords you've selected in your descriptions and on your blog occasionally. Aim for around 1% density so for every 100 words you can include the key phrase once. It's also useful to include it in headers and meta descriptions and then to try and build as many links as possible on relevant websites. Now this might mean getting a fashion blog to link to you for example. You might be able to do this by providing them with free content, which is called guest posting. And speaking of content, content marketing is also a fantastic tool you can use. This basically means you're running a blog and the aim is to get people to subscribe and to look for your site when they want information relevant to your industry. So if you sell gardening tools, you should have an authoritative blog on gardening that people can subscribe to. In doing this, you'll now have an audience that trusts your recommendations and that listens to what you say. You can now recommend them your own products and even provide them with special offers. Email marketing goes hand in hand with content marketing. Try to build the trust of your audience to the point where they're happy to hand over their contact details, then subtly sell your products to them. 
Building an audience for your blog is, of course, the tricky part, but you can do this by running a social media account and by using SEO. And speaking of social media, this can also be used to directly sell your products. One great way to do this is by promoting the value proposition and the lifestyle that your products support. So if you want people to buy your fitness books, this might mean running an Instagram account that includes lots of pictures of you training in the gym. You can also use influencer marketing this way. You know, why not get a big Instagram star to post a photo with one of your products? You can even sell directly through several social media channels. Pinterest, for example, now lets you sell straight through your account and so does Facebook if you use the right WooCommerce plugin or Shopify plugin for your page. Don't be afraid to ask your friends to share your page and your special offers either. Note that with both content marketing and social media, the main objective is to provide value. If you don't do that, people won't follow you and you won't have an audience to sell to. PPC is pay-per-click marketing. This is an excellent tool for getting more sales, but it costs money. Basically, these platforms charge you only when someone clicks on an advert. This means that if the adverts don't work, then you won't be charged anything. You can set a minimum cost per click, though the more you're willing to spend, the more your advert will show up in competitive niches. The biggest ad platforms for PPC are Google AdWords, meaning your advert appears on Google, and Facebook ads. And they must work. You know, Amazon spends up to a million dollars a day on AdWords. And particularly useful is the remarketing feature of AdWords that lets you advertise products that people have previously considered buying back to your old visitors when they're on other sites. 